code walkthrough for 2023. Uh, today is day 14 and it continues with the mirror theme from yesterday where we have uh, a small map and the hashes are cubic rocks that can't move and the circles are circular rocks that can roll around this uh, plane. What happens is this plane gets tilted and we need to work out uh, where the rocks end up. So the circular rocks, if it tilts upwards to the north, this circular rock will roll all the way. It'll sit in this uh, this this um, space here next to this cubic rock where they won't move. For example here, so if we take this and tilt it north, this is what happens. Uh, you then su sum, sum up the um, the row each rock is on, where the bottom is 1 and the top is 10. If you sum up 10 5 times, 9 twice, 8 4 times, you get to 136. So for this one, I thought I could just run a simulation, simulate this um, this happening. Uh, so the way I did it was I just read in uh, I read in the uh, the inputs just as a as a char array, so I can index and um, view the uh, view the individual elements in it. And I then created a tilt function. So uh, this function I've actually used for part two as well. So it's a bit more advanced than it was before I uh, completed part two. But we, but the uh, question is, it wants you to do uh, tilt to the north once, and then tell us what the total uh, total load on the north beam is. So just one tilt to the north. Then we need to find out. Once we've done that, we'll get a new map, and then we need to find out where all the O's are now, and then basically just sum up the rows. So the way the way I've done this is, if we're tilting to the north, what I actually do is I actually take each column at a time. I split the columns on the. Uh, let me just sorry, let me just get it bigger so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Uh, I split it a column. So if it tilts to the north, I split it a column at a time. I take a column at a time. I split it on the hashes, and then and then I'll have these values. And all I do is I order these values because they're chars. They're actually uh, represented as ASCII. They're ASCII double value. So when you sort them, the dots will sort themselves out of out separately from the zeros. So you have all the zeros and all the dots. Obviously, the length will be the same, and I, just, I can reset that set of the uh, that part of the matrix to be the sorted value. And move on to this one. Again, there's no hashes in here, so it'll just take the whole column, sort it. This one, there's a hash here, so it'll do the top half, and it'll move that one to the top, and it'll do the bottom half, move those that one to the top. Uh, so that's the way I do it. I basically just take it line by line and process it. Um, if I was to sort to the west, the way it does it is it then takes each column at a time and it sorts it. The way I decide about north or south is I basically just sort ascending or sort descending. So if I'm if I want to do a um, south, then it's ascending. So it'll take this column and it'll sort it ascending. So what it actually means is it'll put all the, the higher values at the bottom and as an ASCII zero is higher than an ASCII one. So it'll put all the zeros at the bottom. If I do north, it'll do descending. So it'll it'll put all, it'll put all the higher values first. So put the zeros first and the ones at the bottom because as I say, a zero ASCII is higher than one ASCII uh, value. So uh, so yeah, that's kind of how it works. So if I want so in in my solution for one, I just say tilt up. So it does dim dimension two, which is our Sorry, this is a dimension to process. This is which way it loops. So it, lo it loops along the uh, each each column at a time, which is our our second dimension. Uh, so yeah, so this is so it loops along the second dimension. I assume both the inputs are a square, but if they're not, that's fine. It'll handle it. Uh, so it, it loops along every single column when it comes into when it comes into the column. If we're doing if we're doing each each row at each column at a time it'll index the row if we need each column at a time it'll index the column um if it indexes if it indexes a row it does actually transpose it to make it a column so everything we're working here is in column vectors i then index where my cubes are but i also put a zero at the start and um, an extra one at the end that's beyond beyond the scope of the array um because i want to i always want to bit the way I, what i actually do with my cubes is i take my cube value and add one and then take the next cube value and minus one so i always i always so for uh sorry so for say 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 this one i want the, oh, there's, a, there's a cube there and a cube there so i 
if I find that the cube is 2 and 6, I actually want to get the data from 3, 4, and 5. So that's how I do it. And I also add 0 on, so we can get this value, because I'm between 0 and 3. And I add a, an 11 on here, so then we can get between 6 and 11, which is actually 7, 8, 9, and 10. Uh, so I, yeah, I index, create my, create my column vectors, find out where my cubes are, loop through every cube. Um, if the cubes are actually... Uh, one apart if the two neighboring cubes are one apart or two apart then nothing will change because if there's zero zero elements between rocks or, or one element between rocks the cubic rocks then nothing will change because obviously you can't you can't reorder a vector of one so you just just skip those instances uh, if not if there is more than one uh rock between them then we'll they see just select the lines to sort and sort the lines based on the sort order. Sort order is defined up here, as I say. So we're doing descending for north and west and ascending for south and east. Let me just sort that out. Right. Uh, then the final thing is just uh, just replace this L, this L value, back to where it came from based on the dimension, and, that, and that's it. So it, it does it does that for every single column or every single row. And when we're done, we have a new map, which it'll just tell us here. So let's run it and see what happens. So, so that was our original map. And then after I run it for one north tilt, it moves all the rocks upwards as far as they can go. And then I can just simply calculate my Calculate, I think the 136 works for the demo code. So now let's run it again for the um, for the the um, for the full input. Again, there we go. So a sing single n. So I guess if we look at m here, we can see yeah, it's ro everything's rolled up to the top. So yeah, we're good. So that's our answer for part one. Excellent. Part two is a little more tricky. It wants you to move do a complete a cycle north west south east so go up left down right up left down right so we, we always end with an east so everything should always be sat against the right cube which is that's fine so that's one cycle so here's some test data for three cycles i actually want you to run it for I didn't even count these what one billion one billion cycles okay so if you try and brute force that and try and do a billion cycles bearing in mind i'm doing row, row by row cube by cube then it will be running forever so that's obviously not not possible so what i did i used exactly the same function as last time loaded the data the same i've just defined number of cycles here and i just um i ran it for a, f a couple of hundred cycles just to see what would happen to see what the data would look like and i, and I, rec I record my results uh, my results being the load on the northern uh, boundary after each cycle that's what a result is so I then loop for the number of uh, test cycles. I do every direction, north, west, south, and east. Tilt it. So I'm, getting, I'm running, running this tilt function four times uh, for each one of these TNs. And there's 200 TNs. So I actually run the tilt function 800 times. After every time I run the tilt function, so after every time I run the tilt function four times, it calculates the, uh, the force on the northern boundary and just puts it into our results. So if we do this for the demo data, then we'll see what happens. Should run nice and quickly. Yeah, it does. So we've now we've now got R, which is uh, the the, nor the northern load for the first two hundred cycles. So let's visualize that. Let's see what it looks like. So you can see it does quickly enter a cyclic loop. So we can see. So we know that every we know that about every seven values, it's the same. It could hit. To 69 and then it loops and hits 69. So you can kind of see, obviously, this this would be like I imagine this is a, a southward tilt here when we're tilting away from the north, so we're taking the, the balls away from the northern boundary. And then I guess this is a, a northward tilt, and then this is the westward tilt because I guess the, in a westward tilt, nothing moves away from north. So this is the cyclic nature of it. So we now we now know that it's going to cycle from 200 all the way to a billion. So what the question is, is what is the value of um this this graph when this when x is a billion so the first way the first thing i did was work out what the, what the period of this was um oh i was just i was unfortunate that it actually hit 
yeah, my, my code actually won't work for 200 here. Huh. Uh, right. Oh, well, I can't actually fix it. Let me just fix this. Right. So, um, so what, what, the way the way I do it is I take I, te I basically fa I take the the final value of R, and then all the values of R without the last two because a, no a north and a right will always be this a north and a left a north and an east no sorry, a north and a west will always be the same value. So we need to exclude the last two in case we finish on a west like we did in this test data. So take everything except for the last two and find out find out when these two values are equal. So when the last value of the of the array equals a prior value in the array in the sorry, in the in the, in the vector. So it, so it, the, the next line it hits is here, and we want to find out and we want to find out um, find out when how far from the end this last value is. So we can find out where we can find out where the last value is. The last value hits at 193. So if we take if we take that away from oh no, we don't need that. So what we found out here, we found out where the last value is equal to a prior value. So at the same point in the period uh, further further back in the uh, in the vector. Uh, find out what the what the index of the last one is, which is uh, 193, and then take it away from the total number. Uh, which gives us seven. So we now know that our pe the periodicity of our of our waveform here is seven. So every seven iterations is going to be exactly the same value. So you can see seven, seven, seven. They're all the same value. So what I, what I then do is I then take away. Uh, I then determine how many more how many more points beyond here we need to go. So I take n, which is the billion number, away from two hundred. Uh, why is that? Oh, because I didn't set period. So I, I actually need to go forward by another. <coughs> oh, sorry. It's here. I need to go forward by another this many, 999 million, blah, 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 800 points. So but obviously I only need to, every period is the same. So we just need to find out how many, how many, it's, it's an integer number of periods plus so many um plus so many values. So I just do a mod of it with period. So it's actually, so actually take, so what it's saying is for for, for here, just the, it, two, two points on from here is what it'll be at a billion because it's going to be an integer number of cycles and then it'll have two more points. So there's two more points beyond here where it'll be. So we can actually work that out. It's actually, it's not, uh, it's, so it's two points beyond here. So it's not this point, not this point. It's actually going to be this point. So it's going to be 64. So that's the value that we need to work out. So the way we do that is we take uh... yeah. So what what I've actually done is I've just I've just shifted uh, shifted because because our test data we've only got um, we haven't got we've only got a set number of periods in. I just go back to the start of the last period, which is 193. Add my two on. Which is exactly what I did here. Go back to the end of this last period, and add, so this obviously this is the end of the last period. Go to the start of the last period, and add two on, and then we'll get this value here. So we go to the, we find out what the start of the last period was, which was 193, and then we um, just add on R2, which was 195. So then we've just hit 195th result, and that gives us 64, which is. Uh, exactly what it said it should be after a billion cycles, 64. So now all we need to do is run that for the demo data. Uh, I'll run it and show you what my periodicity looks like. Uh, so obviously it's a bigger, uh, in, the map is much bigger now. So instead of it running almost instantly, it does take a bit of time to run. Let's have a little look at the map. So the last thing that we ran was an east. Let's have a look at it here. Yes, yeah, so everything slid to the right. So yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, and then let's visualize. Let's visualize that. Uh, so we can now. Ah, so there we go. So there's our periodicity. It's already established. So this is the end of the last period. Around here is the start of the last period. So again, so we're going to find that the period is about 30, 36, something like that, because this is 200, this is 164. Uh, and then again, we just need to work out. Uh, how many integer periods for in what the remainder is. So let's work out what the period is. 
the period is indeed yeah, 36 as I guessed. So then we can just work out what the value will be at the end. And it says it's 97,000. 97,000, that was correct. That's our, that's our two stars. So yeah, so you don't have to run your simulation a, bil a billion times because eventually, because the balls are just cycling around the board in a, in a fixed pattern, they will eventually enter a fixed cycle. So what we need to do is run the simulation long enough to, to visualize the cycle. And then we know that there's no point in running it because every every 32 cycles, it's just, it's just going to repeat. So we just can remove all those integer cycles between the end of 200 and a billion, and we end up with needing a, co a couple more values, which is how many in this instance. So it was all the cycle. So it was, it, it, it's eight. It, the answer was eight, eight, eight past here. So 64. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, four, nine, seven, two, four, one. Yeah, 97241. So yes, yeah, so that, that's how I solved it today. It was, again, it's quite a nice one. Nice break after... Obviously, Tuesday was a real slog day. 12, 13 was nice and simple, and 14 was also nice and simple. So I hope that was useful. I hope it was more useful than yesterday's. Um, hopefully, I'll do one tomorrow if I can solve it.